It has been a busy and tumultuous offseason for the Golden State Warriors, who have replaced half their team. After unloading valuable assets from their amazing championship run, such as Gary Payton II and Otto Porter Jr., they went on a scavenger hunt for free agents around the league. They seem to have found what they were looking for as they signed a bunch of players. Let's see who exactly they got and how their roster stacks up for next season. Today's video will be about the free agent steals the Golden State Warriors picked up for the 2022-23 season. Along with their new jerseys, the Golden State Warriors will bring back a roster that has two new additions to the immediate rotation, adding Dante DiVincenzo to replace Gary Payton II and John Michael Green to replace Otto Porter Jr., the Warriors have been busy all summer. The 2022 NBA champions have also signed guards Mac McClung, Pat Spencer, Ryan Rollins, and forward Trevian Williams, along with Guy Santos from Brazil. Some of them aren't familiar with the NBA fans, so let's see what they are all about. McClung appeared in two games as a rookie in 2021-22, tallying 4.0 points and 1.5 rebounds in 12.9 minutes in appearances with the Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers. Undrafted out of Texas Tech University in the 2021 NBA Draft, McClung was named 2021-22 NBA G League Rookie of the Year after averaging 21.7 points, 7.6 assists, 5th in the G League, 6.6 .6 rebounds, and 1.4 steals in 36.0 minutes over 27 regular season games with the South Bay Lakers and Windy City Bulls. He recorded a triple-double on February 3 versus Salt Lake City and scored a career-high 37 points on February 6 versus Santa Cruz. The 6-foot 2-inch guard participated in the 2022 Las Vegas Summer League with Golden State, averaging 13.4 points, 4.8 assists, and 3.6 rebounds in 5 appearances. Pat Spencer spent the 2021-22 season with the G League's Capital City Gogo, -Go, averaging 7.5 points, 2.3 rebounds, and 2.1 assists in 14.5 minutes over 15 games. He tallied averages of 10.4 points, 4.1 rebounds, and 3.9 assists in 29.4 minutes over 31 games in his lone season at Northwestern in 2019-20 following a prolific lacrosse career at Loyola University, Maryland, where he earned both the prestigious T. Warriton Award, given annually to the top male and female college lacrosse players in the country, and the United States Intercollegiate Lacrosse Association's Lieutenant Raymond J. Enner's Most Outstanding Player Award. Spencer was the number one overall selection in the Premier Lacrosse League's inaugural draft in 2019 before joining the Wildcats basketball team as a graduate transfer. He was undrafted in the 2020 NBA draft. Trevian Williams was named the Big Ten Sixth Man of the Year as a senior at Purdue in 2021-22, averaging 12.0 points, 7.4 rebounds, and 3.0 assists in 20.1 minutes over 37 games, four starts, and garnering third-team All-Big Ten honors. As a junior, Williams was named Honorable Mention All-America AP and earned first-team All-Big Ten accolades with averages of 15.5 points and 9.1 rebounds in 28 games, 26 starts. Over four seasons with the Boilermakers, the 6-foot 10-inch forward averaged 10.8 points, 7.0 rebounds, and 1.8 assists in 19.0 minutes over 130 games, 60 starts, ending his collegiate career as one of only three Big Ten players in the last 30 years to record at least 1,400 points, 900 rebounds, and 225 career assists, the others being Draymond Green and Ethan Happ. He was undrafted in the 2022 NBA Draft. The Warriors signed guard Ryan Rollins to a three-year deal per a report from Shams Charania of The Athletic and Stadium. Rollins was selected by the Warriors with the number 44 pick in the 2022 NBA Draft. The three-year contract is for $4.8 million and is fully guaranteed for the first two years and significantly guaranteed for the third year. Rollins was a standout player for the University of Toledo averaging 16.4 points, 5.6 rebounds, 3.1 assists, and 1.4 steals on 45%, 32%, 80% shooting splits in two years with the Rockets. The Warriors likely won't need Rollins to contribute on a daily basis, but he does give the reigning champs depth at the guard position, behind Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Jordan Poole, Dante DiVincenzo, and Moses Moody. 
Second round picks have largely performed very well for the Warriors in recent years, particularly Draymond Green and Eric Pascal. Though many insiders saw Santos as a likely draft and stash candidate for the Warriors in the upcoming season, he challenged some of those expectations with a strong showing during the team's summer league season. He was the star of the team's July 2nd debut, notching team highs with 23 points, 6 rebounds and 3 steals. Santos ended up averaging 8.0 points and 3.5 rebounds in 19.8 minutes per game. After his performance in the team's summer league opener, Santos said he wanted to seize his opportunity to show what he could do against NBA competition after facing mostly players from his native country. The San Francisco Chronicle's Connor Letourneau noted that Santos could now be a candidate for the 15-man roster, though he is more likely to start his career in the G League. One popular name is Guy Santos, Golden State's late second-round pick who showed some promise at Summer League, Letourneau wrote on July 21. But I think the Warriors would prefer someone more NBA-ready on their two-way contract. If they have it their way, Santos will spend next season with the G League's Santa Cruz Warriors while the big club retains his draft rights. Since being drafted by the Bucks in 2018, competing for title contenders is pretty much all DiVincenzo knows. That is, of course, outside of a few months spent with the Kings this past season. DiVincenzo, 25, missed Milwaukee's 2019 run to the Eastern Conference Finals with an injury, but he played in 10 NBA playoff games for the top-seeded Bucks in 2020. In 2021, DiVincenzo started in the first three games of Milwaukee's championship run before missing the final 20 games with an ankle injury. He wasn't on the floor for the title clincher, but DiVincenzo knows what it's like to contribute and play when the stakes are high. It's certainly not a one-for-one -one replacement for Peyton, who developed a reputation as a disruptive and sometimes lockdown defender. But the 6'4 DiVincenzo is a few years younger, has a bit more size and, despite his injury history, boasts plenty of athleticism. With Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson in the fold, Golden State's starting backcourt is set, but the Splash Brothers aren't as young as they once were. DiVincenzo is a career 34.7% three-point shooter that shot 36.8% from deep over 25 games with the Kings last year and can play off the ball, potentially in three-guard lineups. The biggest part of this signing? This is a prove-it deal for DiVincenzo, who will have a player option following this season. Contributing to another deep postseason run, or even a title run, could pay dividends should DiVincenzo enter the open market again in 2023. At 32, Jamichael Green brings the ability to defend multiple positions and, as a career 36.6% three-point shooter, the ability to knock down open jumpers. Admittedly, Green's shooting has been off since the 2021 NBA playoffs, but there is something to be said about the quality of the shot. Green, like all Nuggets players, benefited from the playmaking of Nikola Jokic during his time in Denver. But after injuries to Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., he saw his three-point efficiency dip. In Golden State, Jamichael Green will almost be an afterthought on the perimeter with Curry, Thompson and Jordan Poole drawing attention. Factor in the playmaking of Draymond Green, and it wouldn't be a surprise to see Jamichael Green rediscover that shooting touch. He could make his presence felt in transition too when opposing defenses are panicking at the thought of Curry breaking free. Similar to DiVincenzo and Payton, Green isn't a carbon copy of Porter, but the Warriors didn't necessarily need one. They've got a player that can defend, rebound, and drain an open three-pointer when the opportunity presents itself. Warriors have definitely signed some under-the-radar players to their liking who might explode off the bench this upcoming season, especially McClung, while also bringing along proven commodities in DiVincenzo and Green. Time will tell how much other teams have made a mistake passing on these guys, but if anyone can make a role player look like a superstar, it's the Warriors. And what is your opinion? Do you think all these new signings could prove to be great for the Warriors? Which player would fit in best and become this year's Jordan Poole? I would love to hear what you think, so please let me know what you think in the comments. Oh, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more interesting NBA content. Thanks for watching.